as the leadership of the Cape Church. A round of applause for them, please. Um, for, for the opportunity to get to do this. I do not take it for granted. So, um, before we start, let's just say a prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you so much. We could, not, we could never emphasize or express a gratitude to you enough. And as we go into a time of your word, we ask that you have your way in this service. I know I'm the one standing here, but you take the lead and you take the glory. Your word will come with clarity, with precision, with power. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, Mama Kems set the ball rolling last week with the advent. You know, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. We've been saying it since I was born. We'll continue to say it most likely after. I want to do wedding first before he comes. So, I want to buy. There are plenty things I want to do. So, we and, he and I have an arrangement. But, anyways, it's coming, whether I'm ready or not. And so, the advent is the important arrival an approach of this this great entity this great being coming is come he's been born and we've celebrated his life but we're celebrating his birth right we recognize that that happened and also we're anticipating his second coming right and usually at this time of the year you know we start to take stock of what the year has been so this is the time of the year usually you get to decide if you want to be disappointed at the year or you want to be excited about the year. You know, you start to think, um, what has God done this year? You know, you want to take stock, you want to review, you want to, what's the word I'm looking for? Assess. You know, basically you want to look back from January, the whole 11 months and think, what have I achieved, Right? What have I done? And you want to decide if God, and that's the yardstick with which we will judge God's faithfulness for the year. Like, um, did my offer letter from Exxon Mobil come? No. You know, did my on day Elantra come? No, it's okay. He's still faithful. You know, we, we tend to do that. I remember um, a couple of, I think it was years ago, it was Christmas, and I told God what I wanted for his own birthday know how that's like how you're the one celebrating birthdays you're the one spending the money you know I told him what I wanted you know and I and I put an ultimatum to God you know and I was telling him dad that if you don't do this right this is what I'm going to do I'm not going to show up at I actually I stabbed um what's it called Christmas Eve that year because I was so upset with God he didn't hear me you know and I gave him an ultimatum and blah 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 and God must have been like say God like really you know, I was so upset. I decided that Christmas wasn't Christmas because I didn't get what I wanted. So what is Christmas really? You know, is it that time where you start to make demands or feel like God is not faithful because he didn't bring to pass the promises that you expect? So it's a lot of time for us to think and people start to get disappointed a lot. You know, especially when there's somebody who's really at the table at that time of the year and who's not this year. And it looks like God has forsaken you. You know, or certain things seem to have happened for everyone. And I just wanted to start by saying that we still judge him faithful. Right? We still judge him faithful. He stays consistent, even though it doesn't look like it in our lives. Right? So I don't want this time of the year to be a time of, I need to hurry. I didn't do so much. I didn't meet my deadline. I didn't do this. I was set, I, I intend to do certain things by this time of the year. And yet it didn't happen. But we judge him faithful. Right? That being said, what's all the fuss about? Why do we keep Advent? People start to celebrate Christmas Sundays before. People start to prepare in anticipation. What is what is it all about? Why, why all the fuss? And um, in the Old Testament, about over... 300 prophecies were made about the coming of one guy. He's coming. Yeah. He's coming. Is it that big of a deal? Like, everybody kept saying it. Oh, he's going to come this way. He's going to come in this town. And this is going to happen. This is what he's going to accomplish. There was a lot of fuss about it. And first, I wanted to take a break and look at the beauty of this moment, of this season right now. Is that we're celebrating the fulfillment of that prophecy, of those prophecies. And if nothing else, 
determines God's faithfulness. I think that's a testament of his faithfulness. If nothing else. He was able to bring to pass what over 300 prophecies said will happen. And it, it, it's, it's just a reminder that God hasn't forgotten and doesn't forget his children. And that's, that's, that's an encouragement for me to you this morning. Even though, I don't know what this is today. Twelfth. He hasn't forgotten. He hasn't forgotten. God is faithful. God hasn't forgotten. And it is a waiting period. As individuals, we're waiting for something in our lives. As a church, we're waiting for something. As a body of Christ, we're waiting for the second coming. Everybody is waiting. We're waiting, we're waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. And the question is, what do you really do while you're waiting? Because, I don't know, I'm, I'm in Jesus' name, I'm very patient. It's a prophecy. It's a, what's the word? It's a fruit in Jesus' name. I am a patient person. You know, I'm, eh? You know, I, I declare that I'm patient in Jesus' name. I'm the one who picks up the phone and when it starts to die and it's taking too much to ring, I cut the call. That's how patient I am in Jesus' name. You know, I'm the one when it looks like the ATM is refusing to give my money. I just, just cancel the transaction and give my card. You know, but so it, it makes it difficult to wait for my promise and then the promise of his coming. Like the one you promised me you've not done. It's not your own coming that I want to be doing. So wh why you wait? What do you do? Why you wait for him to fulfill the prophecy over your life? Maybe somebody told you when you were small that and I can see him. He looked like, I see this boy. The future president of Nigeria. You know, or something. He said something to you. Oh, the prophet said I was going to be tall. No, I'm not lying. True, true. Oh, you look like your brother. You look like your my brother is six three. You know, you look like your dad. So you most likely be talking. Mm -hmm, this is everything. I'm still waiting. So that promise has not been fulfilled. But while we wait, you know, that the, the little things from the little things to the major thing is. So what do you do while we wait? look at a lot of stories in the Bible of God coming to you to give you a promise you did not ask for? I feel like it's easier to wait on a promise that I was the one who, who orchestrated it. Like if I come to you and ask you for some money and you're like, oh well you didn't let me know. You know what? I promise I'll give it to you. It's very hard for me to nag you because you didn't offer. I came to ask. But in a case that I'm just on my own, dear jelly. And then you said, damn, you know what? I promise you something. And it looks like you're not doing it. My question is, I did not send you to promise me. So why is it taking you so long to fulfill that which you've promised? We picked the promise at the beginning of the year. Did we do that? And it was, you know, how exciting it is when you read that word. You will learn to many, you will not bore. you be like, forget. This year. And then it looks like it's not happening. Look at Abraham. He was on his own. God said, you know what? You're going to have nations come out of you. You're going to have kids. And dude was 75. It didn't happen until it was 100. 25 years of waiting for a promise I didn't ask for. How do you wait? You look at Joseph. He just goes to sleep like everybody sleeps every night. And then he has a dream. Sun and moon are bowing down. They just feel like. And he gets excited. Oh, the daddy says, oh, that means, you know, it means you're going to be great or whatever, whatever, whatever. Bam, slavery. Bam, prison. Takes over... I don't know, 17 years they were about for him to see the fulfillment of that promise. We look at the story of David. Guy was just a... Okay, I was going to say full and yet, but that's not what he was. You know? You know, chasing cow and chicken all around. Just doing his thing, worshipping God, loving his life, not caring. And then they come to call him that one prophet is wanting to anoint you in our house. And then they say, you're going to be king. I didn't ask for that promise. And then he takes about 15 years or more before the manifestation of that promise. Even Jesus that he told us was coming. Dude came and he didn't do anything for 30 years. At least not that we saw. Most likely he was doing carpentry work for the first 30 years of his life. <laughs> he was son of a carpenter. You know, and you know those, that, that delay, that promise. So what do you do while we wait? I can remember PJ talked about this months ago. About how, why you wait, what you build is your patience. Even as we wait for Jesus to come. And you wait for the promise to be fulfilled. Your patience. You build your immunity. 
humility rather. You humble yourself while you wait. You build your character. You build your character. You know, you start to see the traits of the kind of leader you will be from. I saw a WhatsApp, um, what was it? About um, children who were trying to campaign for, I think it was, was it um, class captain, right? And the child had prepared his parents, they'd done all the M manifesto and blah, blah, blah. Child comes home, comes second. What happened? They said they first um, shared Capriceon in, um, during their campaign. Right. Right. He shared Capriceon. I don't know. If that, I would have collected Capriceon. I don't have shared Capriceon. You know. But that, that was what happened. So even, even, so you know from then before he gets to the position of, say, um, a local government, um, government chairman or something, it starts to build your character. That's your, your waiting period is your character building period. So even now, although we're anticipating the second coming, are you even ready for his coming? Oh, come, 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 come. I had my, my niece and my nephew over at my house um, this couple of days. We thought we were ready for them to come. We had everything done. We wanted to do this and do that. When they came, we knew we were not ready for them. I have a code. That's proof that I was not ready. So when so what 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 when you're waiting, you know, it's not it's, it's easier to get to start to fidget and start to, you know, come, 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 come. But are you ready really for this coming that we're talking about? Are you ready? So what do you do? We just mentioned the things you do while you wait. But the thing is, the assurance is you never wait in vain. You never. It's a given. It is never in vain. You don't wait in vain. It comes. Though you may tarry. It will surely, most definitely, come. So even the promise for you, for yourself, for your life this year, even if it doesn't happen this year, there's always next year. Even if it doesn't happen next year, there's always the year after. Now, tomorrow isn't promised, right? But his promise is sure. So you guys determine how you want to handle that. Amen? So we keep talking about this coming, 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 coming. What, what is the, what, what, are we, what are we waiting for? What is the excitement about? You know, Christmas is, is that time of the year. There's lots of food, there's family, there's gifts and all of that. But beyond that, why do we have to celebrate? Why do we need to remember? Why do we need to anticipate this? Because one of the ultimate reasons, if not primary reason why you came, is your salvation. And that does not sound like the kind of gift you wrapped up in a book. But I think that's the best gift to give us as Christians and believers. The gift of salvation. Salvation and redemption. Can you please put up Luke 1, 67 to 70? 67, 69. Amen. Okay, so praise God. We're talking about his salvation and redemption. Now his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now this is talking about John the Baptist's father. Right, he was a foreigner for Jesus Christ. Right. Now his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Keep going. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us, for us in the house of his servant David. And as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. Keep going that we should be saved from our enemies and from the land and of all who hate us, blah, 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 blah. It goes, we're just trying to emphasize the fact that the reason why we're doing this, the reason why we're waiting for his coming is this salvation and redemption. And I don't know what that means to you, but that's, that's the genesis, really. That's how we start with us as children. That's why he's been born. Okay, no. We're celebrating his birth. He's been born. Mary's not just um, attending Auntie Nanda. That's, that's, that's all gone. You know, for his salvation 
and redemption. We're thinking of his salvation. We're thinking deliverance from sin and its consequences. That is why. That, you, that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. That sin does not have dominion over you. That you get to have a say if I can pull through or not. So it's dependent on you. So he has come and is coming again to deliver from sin and its consequences. And then we're talking about redemption. It means you are deemed valuable. You are valued to him. It means there was an exchange. You've been regained. You've been repurchased because you are of value to God. If there's nothing else to celebrate this Christmas, it's the fact that you're valuable. Amen. <laughs> you will tell people we're freaking out on my behalf. Like, stop that. You've been delivered. You have been redeemed because you are of value. And another benefit and purpose for his coming that we're celebrating and we're anticipating is the joy of this salvation and the joy that comes with having this, this Christ, this gift. Matthew 2, 10 to 11. When they saw this star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. That's 10, verse 11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and blah, and blah, blah, blah. And then you go to Luke 2, 10 to 11 as well. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. So another reason why we're waiting and we're already enjoying is the joy of our salvation. Somebody define joy as the praise-filled assurance that God is in control and working everything out for our good and for his glory. I think one of my, I would say I was delivered a couple of weeks ago when I kept being reminded that it is all for his glory. So even times when it looks like you are disappointed by what God is doing or hasn't done, who takes the glory? Do you understand? I feel like he, he takes the, the pressure off of you and puts it on him. Because if it's his glory, who go cast? Is it me or him? When he doesn't come through as God, that's the confidence that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had in the fire. That if I die, I'm not dying, but them shall. Right? God is God. And if I come out of this fire looking fly like nothing happened, God is God. So either ways, God is God. So even when those promises do not look like they're going to be fulfilled, God is God. And when it is fulfilled, God is God. I feel like we need to stop stressing. We do. We need to stop stressing. It's like when you lay your hands and pray with someone. Oh, I have a headache. And you're feeling like your pastor encouraged you that you have the power of healing. You can lay hands. And then you say, it's fine. Come with me, sister. Let me pray for you. And then you pray for them. And you're going back to your house or hostel or whatever, all excited that you've healed the sick. And then you go to the clinic the next day and the person's on the bed. Ha, <laughs> ha, That's why... That's why you get scared because you're thinking, what happens if it doesn't happen? Is it your glory? I don't understand. So when he says a word, 
and you feel like he's not backing it up, who is it on? It's not on you who heard the word. If I say to you, I'm going to give you something and I default in that thing, it's not on you. It's on me. And the word says is the exalt is, is what above his name. So we need to stop stressing. Stop giving God ultimatums. Stop fidgeting. If you're saying that your, your time and your life is in his hands, why are you not worried about time and season when it's outside of time and season? Why are you stressed and telling God time is going and God is wondering which time? Like, down, 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 Christmas is coming, coming. You need to do it and he's wondering, what, what, what are you talking about? I'm not bound by these things. I don't live by your rules. So you can't give me ultimatum about when my, my son should come or when should not come. If you just say he's not coming again, we'll be all right. The praise field assurance that God is in control and working everything, everything, everything out for your good. He's working everything out, not the way you think it will be. Now, he didn't say I'm going to work things out the way you want it for your good. Thanks, Mama Kevs. Do I look half black, half red? Okay, was it good? Amen. So we decide when we ask God for a promise. And when he promises something, even without us asking, we determine the means, the method, and the time frame. What audacity. It's sure for you, God. I promise you something. You're telling me, so God, you need to do it between April and May. Because, you know, I don't know. Usually May is my season of receiving stuff. So that's the timeline I'm giving you. You know, between April and May. And I think that if you want to bless me, I don't want you to use my dad. I'm too used to him. I see him every day. I don't want you to use my dad. I think you should use Dangote. You know, so that the blessing can be huge. Something huge. You know, that's what I want you to use. And then I think, I don't like all those 11 hour thing that you do, like die minutes. I want you to do it like around 7 a.m. on Saturday. Like I just stretch and I grab my phone and then I see that message, you know. I don't understand. When we start to, when we take ourselves out of the equation, it makes things easier. That's why he said, I'm pretty sure it was pleading. Please be still. I know that I am God. Like, please step aside. Please be still. And let me be God. Let me be the God that fulfills your promise. Let me be the God that makes your dreams a reality. And if I decide to show up, immediately you open your mouth. Let it be on me. And if I to wait, if I decide to wait until the eleventh hour, let it be on me. But either way, it is me and not you. This year, guys, Christmas is not about you; it's about Him. It has nothing to do with what rice you're cooking. It has nothing to do if your friends are coming over this year or not. It has nothing to do with if you met your deadline or KPI for the year. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do about to do with him. And guess what? He loves his glory like nothing else. That's why he doesn't want to share it. So don't help me. Imagine when the ark went to fall and somebody was like, oh my God, the ark of God. <gasps> and then bam. R.I.P. To God be the glory. I don't want your help. I don't need your help. Be still, move aside, and let me be God over the promises and the and prophecies that are made over your life. Stop fidgeting. I have times and season in my hand. Maybe time is on the left and seasons on the right hand. And yet I still have room to have your own life in it. So I decide I want I want to maneuver. I remember during um, my NYSC and um, CDS, it was usually the worst times for core members then. They just pack us like sanding. They didn't have anything to do. Just take us there, wear that ugly uniform, and then we'll just stand in the sun and stuff. 
So as much as possible, you try and get there early so that you can get your file and make a queue. And this particular one had been late, right, if I remember correctly. And I got there and the queue was already long. So before it would be your turn, it go hard, gone. Right? And it looked like I'm going to spend the whole day here. So we're facing, let's say we're facing this direction, right? And they say, okay, make a queue and everybody faces this direction. And then I'm at the back of the queue and it looks like I'm going to spend the whole day here. Guess what? Some guy shows up and says, you know what? Break the queues into, say, four. And then that means like you most likely broke out from the middle. And then whoever is was in the middle got to be in front. Right? And then it happened like that, like that. And next thing I ended up being second on the queue. And I was at the front. You see, that's how God works. If it needs to change the angle for which the gift is being given for you to get to you, it will happen. It's all up to him. You've ever been on a queue and ATM is working fine and you look like, okay, this one is moving faster. And when you move, that's when he stops working. <laughs> that's what happens when we try to do things our way. The ATM can stop working. You've been there. You've been waiting. And then somebody says, ah, this one is moving. And the moment you move, other people join the queue we're on. And then that one is out of service. Assurance, of course, there's a there's a place for positioning, right? You know, not sit down and cross leg and hang your hand here and say, Pastor Dami said blessing is coming. That was it. That, that's not what I said, right? You have a role to play. But it determines your role. Don't assume the God role. So even while you're waiting for his coming and the fulfillment of these prophecies and the fulfillment of these promises, you are the recipient, you're on the receiving end. So you take the instructions and the order and you obey. You don't determine the rules of the game. And it's so unfair for them because it's in our favor is we serve the God who determines what the playground is. If you feel like a student are not winning, you will rig the game in your favor. I remember a story of, um, I read on Facebook one time, of a child who stood by the roadside and he was there for so long waiting for the bus and this older lady had seen the child and like, who leaves this tiny child on the road? Where's your parents? Where's your anything? And he says, oh, um, you won't find a bus here. Maybe walk down the road a little to your left and stand. And he says, no, okay, I'll find it. And the woman keeps insisting, like, listen to me. The, the bus you're waiting for, yeah, it's not here. Move down the road. And the guy insists. And that, no, 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 it's going to wait here. And then minutes down the line, the bus rides to his front and picks him up. And then he turns to the old lady and says that the bus driver is my dad. I can be standing at the bar. He will come and get me. So the bus driver of this life is your dad. He will rig it in your favor. There will be trials, definitely. There will be tribulations, yes. But victory is guaranteed. The joy that we're talking about is not dependent on this season. Your joy does not stop the moment Christmas ends. By Boxing Day, your joy should have expiring. By 27, you should have been done with the joy. It's not seasonal. It's not conditional. It's not fleeting. And most of all, it doesn't have to do with your circumstance. It's on the inside. That's the joy that we're promising. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. as a child is born, unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. John 14 27 
peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So, parting words. The remaining days of this year, it's 12th, right? No, I do the math. Is it, how many days is remaining? Ah, mass. Ah, oh my God. Oh my God. Like, did you pull out your calculator? <laughs> I trust me for him over the 19 ahead at the back. What? 18.5. Really? Cape dwellers. <laughs> Amen. So, for the remaining 18.5 days, you heard it in Cape first. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid about what you got or what you did not get. About what is delayed or what is, I don't know. About time. About the season. It's not about you. It's about his son. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate the salvation that is birth as guaranteed. Celebrate the joy. Celebrate the freedom. Celebrate the guidance. Celebrate the wise counsel like we read earlier. He is the reason. Is I know it sounds very cliche and just rhyme word, but that's because he is. Not Dami, not anyone else, but Jesus is. So this year, focus on him and all the things that he allowed you to enjoy. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you give us this joy that you talk about. We ask that we love and enjoy the benefit of our salvation. And because you are the Prince of Peace, we ask that regardless of what the rest of the weeks are going to look like, regardless of the time or the season, that the peace of God will dwell in our heart richly. That this peace will sustain us even in this period in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask for your blessings, your, your word, your guidance, your leading as we go into this week. And that favor, that favor that is unmerited, that grace that speaks for us even in our absence. We ask that you speak this week in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.